hello everyone so we'll continue with the topic that metabolic heat and body temperature how to control the how the body temperature is controlled by human physiology and then by using the cloth okay, to keep ourselves safe and comfortable so disturbance in stability of body temperature as we have discussed in winter it is a totally different physiology and in summer the physiology are totally different. Okay. So, in winter we have mentioned that the reduced temperature is controlled that it in winter the our body tries to release heat at very high rate because of the temperature gradient that uh, our body uh, temperature body heat is uh, say body temperature or skin temperature is say around say 34 35 degrees celsius and the outer temperature the environmental temperature is much lower than the uh, body temperature so our heat uh, is released at very high rate as we have discussed by uh, conduction convection and radiation and it is uh, the net outward heat is uh, much more than the heat which we uh, our body generates by metabolic heat. So, the there are two ways of uh, stopping that by body physiology and if physiology fails then by using the extra layer of clothing. Okay. So, the body physiology works at lower temperature when our body starts releasing the heat okay, out to the environment at that temperature our metabolic rate increases automatically in winter that is why it in winter our metabolic rate is more. Okay. Then our constriction of uh, blood vessel, blood vessel gets constricted as we have mentioned. So, it uh, releases uh, less quantity of uh, uh, blood flow it uh, it allows less uh, blood flow so tries to uh, retain the body heat because blood flows out to the up to the skin means it takes away the body heat and from there it uh, comes out okay so heat is retained within the body by reducing the blood circulation so vaso vasoconstriction is the is uh, uh, there uh, it uh, release the uh, reduces the body uh, blood circulation up to the skin then as we have mentioned if it is insufficient then our body uh, starts another physiological phenomena which is called which is known as shivering by tensioning the muscles and a person uh, can be comfortable if we uh, stop releasing the heat, the heat goes out. If we actually retain the heat by wrapping the clothing. So, after if one layer of clothing is not enough, then we keep on increasing the layer till the body starts shivering is the extreme condition where the body physiology is not able to retain the body heat. Okay. So, a person stops shivering when he wears cloth which is due to the insulation provided by the clothing. Okay. Now, in summer what happens just almost opposite phenomena takes place. In addition to that in summer the sweating process is activated. Okay. In sweating through sweating through sweat directly releases the heat. So, if sweat comes out it releases. So, that is why in in summer our sweating activity starts. Okay. So, it starts from say when a temperature say around from 10 degree Celsius to say it goes on increasing 30 degree Celsius then sweating activity starts. Okay. So, to control the increased body heat. So, to release the in, in, uh, increased body heat so, just opposite thing happens what in case of uh, in uh, winter 
the vasoconstriction was there. His here we need the extra blood flow to the skin. So, vasodilation is uh, there. Okay. So, vascular system to enhance the heat flow up to, uh, from the skin. So, vasodilation started. So, this picture shows very nice detailed about the what are the things happening here. So, our body always tries to keep the temperature in normal zone. So, if it is too hot, okay, so it affects the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus has got two types of sensation, it is a cold, sensor, cold center and hot center. Okay. Hot center. So, if it is too hot, so hypothalamus sends signal to our body and what happened? The vasodilation starts okay. and uh, uh, the capillary vasodilation is uh, of the surface surface capillary starts the constrict vasic. So, it, uh, it uh, stops the constriction, it starts the dilation that means extra blood flow takes place, then sweating increases decrease in metabolic rate. So, so as soon uh, as the, along with the increase in sweating vaso dilation, so metabolic rate at the at summer at hot temperature it reduces. So, that our body does not generate extra heat okay. although already it is uh, it has received heat. So, to reduce the to maintain that uh, in, uh, to reduce that level. So, it uh, metabolic rate has uh, reduced and hairs lie flat. So, that is the one phenomena because here tensioning of hairs is not there. So, hair lies flat and all this phenomena helps in cooling of body. So, that is the and to bring it to normal temperature. In case of cold temperature, so that in, in cold center of hypothalamus, it sends signal where vasoconstriction is activated that means, uh, blood flow is not there not there means blood flow is a reduced the sweating has decreased almost you, we can see that in cold we do not sweat because we do not need to release the heat we have we have to actually we need to retain the heat. So, sweating uh, is uh, not activated increase in metabolic rate. So, to have uh, to increase the heat so metabolic rate tries to increase. Okay. So, here it stands on the end so, be due to the mass muscle toning, okay, it is a tensioning that it uh, here gets uh, straightened and then shivering starts. Shivering by shivering as we have mentioned that a body tries to get extra heat by mechanical vibration. Okay. So, this uh, and this uh, body heat increases it to maintain the body heat. Okay. Now, if it is not enough to cool so, in hot if it is not enough to cool what happens? Then the cooling takes place by external process of evaporation. So, these are the all this phenomena its activity by physiological activity, but if it fails then the extra body heat in summer is taken away by the in the form of latent heat of evaporation that we have discussed earlier. Similarly, if it this all this activities physiological activity fails to retain the body heat in cold, then what we have to do? We have to actually use extra layer of cloth to retain to release to actually restrict the release of body heat. So, this all, all these activities are actually done along with the clothing to maintain our body uh, core temperature. Okay. So, this is the hypothalamus okay, in the brain which actually sends the cold and warm sensation. Okay. Now, the human body 
requires about 40 calorie per hour per square meter okay, body area for the basic activities. That is the energy which is required for our basic activity, but the heat production rate increases that metabolic heat this is the met basic metabolic heat is required. Okay. But this metabolic rate increases rapidly with the activity. If we keep changing the our activity, the our metabolic rate increases okay. and that sometimes creates problem of overheating. So, these things will we will just discuss and the and produce heat has to be dissipated effectively. So, our then our clothing has to act. So, not to retain the heat, but how to release the heat. Okay. So, at different activity we have different level of uh, metabolic heat and also with the activity as we our metabolic heat increases our body core temperature also changes due to the activity. So, change in body core temperature with time at different level of activities are shown in this curve. So, just at rest our body core temperature remains same. So, we are resting we are actually not doing anything our basic activity we are uh, we are uh, generating this much heat 40 calorie per hour per square meter of body that typically it is around 80 to 90 calorie because our human body area is around say 2 square meter. So, that uh, type of body heat we generate and that we get the body heat also we release that heat. So, our body temperature remains constant, but when we start walking uh, this metabolic heat increases and the rate of heat generation is more than the rate of heat release. So, our body core temperature increases little bit okay, initially then after that it gets stabilized. So, with the time, but when a person do heavy activity. So, at that heavy activity, so it generates more and more heat huge quantity of heat and our body core temperature increases. So, it goes beyond the sometime it goes around say 39 40 degree Celsius. So, that temperature it is that one has to actually maintain that cool down the body heat uh, that uh, core temperature by proper physiological activities. Okay. Now, try to see that for different activities what are the different level of heat generation metabolic heat generation. So, at steady quite conditions as quite seated condition. So, it is around say 55 to 65 watt per square meter. So, if we this is uh, coming around around say uh, 85 to 90. Okay. So, that this is the seated quietly okay, basic metabolic heat that is when it sleeps that so as the activity increases. So, our body heat actually increases. So, our metabolic heat. So, uh, if we walk at 3 kilometer per hour speed we will generate almost double. Okay. So, that 110 to 120 watt per square meter okay. and uh, similarly for um, uh, at higher uh, speed we uh, generate higher heat. So, and uh, so a person suppose he is playing basketball at high active. Uh, so, the metabolic heat generation will be very very high. So, that at different activity level. So, our body heat generation is more and uh, is, is changing. So, depending on that our body core temperature also changes. Okay. So, our function of our clothing is to maintain the body core temperature to keep ourselves comfortable and safe. So, that we can only do by proper release of uh, or evaporation of sweat. 
So, in case of heavy activity the body temperature increases very rapidly and the heat balancing is done by exchange of heat with the environment mainly by radiation and to some extent by conduction. Conduction is very less okay. mainly by radiation. Why conduction is less? Because the clothing or surrounding layer the conductivity thermal conductivity is uh, very low. Okay. So, by uh, and uh, that is why this uh, surrounding object like or environment by conduction is through uh, is contact. So, this is actually least amount that we have uh, seen earlier also. So, radiation is the process by which we can maintain our body core temperature due to lower thermal conductivity of air and most of the clothing material the conductive heat flow is usually very low okay, less importance. But when the fabric gets wet the wet fabric has got very high thermal conductivity. So, in that that condition our clothing releases a heat at very high rate. So, on the other hand the thermal conductivity of the liquid medium like water is very high. Due to this the insulation characteristics is almost lost when the garment is wet. So, then at wet condition we feel in even when the body temperature is very high. So, metabolic rate is if we wear a wet cloth then we will feel cool cooler feeling because of the, the garment lost its thermal con, uh, thermal insulation and body heat it releases body heat quickly. The release of excess metabolic heat happens through the secretion of sweat through the sweat gland okay. and it from the sweat gland the it comes out of the skin. The sweating rate sometime can be very high it is a maximum up to 4 liters per hour that at that rate one can actually release the sweat. The cooling of clothed human body in hot and humid environment in hot environment is achieved not by sweating because the body heat it's, it releases the uh, sweat to release the body heat, but the cooling is not completed until and unless the this sweat is gets evaporated because our body physiology as we have discussed it starts sending the uh, releasing the sweat, but that may or may not be sufficient to keep our body cool. If it is not sufficient then our that sweat has to whatever sweat has been released that sweat has to be evaporated. So, that it gets the excess latent heat. Now, we can get feeling we can get uh, feeling when we wear one impermeable clothing in hot environment what happens the body physiology releases the heat in with the help of sweating, but the sweating the, the impermeable or non absorbent cloth it is not absorbing the sweat and it is not also transmitting the sweat from inside microclimate to environment what happens the sweat simply start dripping it, it so it is not able to take away the excess heat by evaporation. So, the person may not feel cooler may not feel comfortable. Okay. So, in similar thing happens in hot and humid environment. In hot and humid environment our body physiology releases the sweat, but as the humid environment is already saturated with uh, water. So, that uh, it does not take excess sweat and that that is why the person may not feel comfortable. Okay. So, we do not we normally do not feel comfortable or cool because 
the sweat cannot evaporate, it cannot get and takes away the latent heat okay, from our body and the sweat simply drips. If it drips that means, it takes the heat from uh, uh, only uh, by physiologically, physiologically it uh, through the uh, sweat it takes out heat, but it is it may not be sufficient. In the case there is in in case there is a little wind blowing. So, if in that case in hot and humid weather if little wind blows that means, it takes away the humid air and then it enhances the evaporation and we feel comfortable even in the hot and humid clothing. We feel cool due to that uh, why due to the release of latent heat extra latent heat. So, in extremely hot and dry climate. So, we will discuss this one before that the, the wind blowing if we the blow the wind that means, that it is a it takes away the heat it takes away the heat in terms of the latent heat of evaporation. So, we can see there is an uh, instrument it was developed here to see the microclimate temperature and humidity at different level of air velocity. So, here this is the chamber which actually it is uh, partially filled with water and heater is there to maintain the heat uh, temperature this is thermostat control. That means, this the heater will generate actually that uh, the humidity. So, it actually that it gets evaporated this the yellow color this is the mimic skin it is actually simulates our human skin with the micro pores okay. and there are uh, there is a gap and this this one it is a blue color it is a uh, fabric sample. So, in between the skin and the uh, this fabric we can control the gap. So, this place is known this is actually simulating the microclimate. Microclimate means it is a place between our skin and the fabric. Okay. This is the place where we actually feel uh, comfortable or not. Okay. Now, this microclimate and above the micro uh, this fabric there is a air duct which simulates the flow of air. Okay. So, we can change the flow of air by changing the fan speed. So, as the air blows it will take away the excess humidity from here and that uh, and the or uh, microclimate we wanted to study the effect of microclimate on the on uh, uh, at different flow velocity okay and this is uh, the picture okay now here we can see as the with the time so at the at different time so this is initially the micro at the microclimate the humidity increases okay this is increase in humidity because the gradually humidity is accumulated from the skin to the microclimate so humidity increases here okay and at this point say here we switch on the fan okay and speed increases at four different points 1 this as 2 3 4 at different point we actually change the fan speed. So, uh, air blow rate. So, we try we try to study the its effect on microclimate. So, immediately after starting the fan the humidity of the microclimate reduces that means, the that due to the forced convection it takes away the humidity uh, the moisture. So, that means, that microclimate zone the humidity reduces due to forced convection 
the water molecule water particles is uh, coming out from the fabric. So, our body gets little bit dry. Okay. So, that is why as we keep on increasing the rate of reduction of humidity is more and more. Okay. So, these are the uh, and similarly if you see at certain temperature here the temperature of the microclimate is constant when we do not change the fan speed, but if we change the fan speed it gradually starts dropping the microclimate ten temperature drops along with the drop in the humidity. So, this drop in temperature is due to that evaporation. Okay. So, that we have seen that there is a drop in temperature. So, initial increases then it is again it is a drop. So, for different types of fabric it has been studied. So, different fabric they actually respond differently. Okay. So, so, these are the different activities. So, that which shows that uh, the wind blowing also has got direct impact on that the temperature of our skin and the humidity of the skin. Okay. So, we will come back again here. So, in hot and humid condition in case there is a little wind blown that helps in evaporation of sweat even in hot and humid climate. So, that it, uh, it evaporates and our body gets cool down. So, it helps in our uh, that uh, physiological activities. So, what happens then in extreme hot and dry climate? So, in extreme hot and dry climate we sometime we see that we, uh, we feel that we, we do not sweat because sweat actually gets evaporated as soon as sweat generates and in extreme dry condition sweat as soon as it generates it gets evaporated from the skin. So, it is does not come out in the form of liquid without wetting our skin does not wet our skin. If it does not wet that means we will we do not get the evaporative cooling. So, we, we have seen that in uh, extreme summer in dry summer. So, we do not sweat that actually uh, if we do not sweat then it is a threat basically because the evaporative cooling helps in extra it, uh, it uh, takes away extra heat from our body. So, body temperature remains it is maintained. So, by the heat supplied by the skin surface. So, it uh, the insensible evaporation takes place automatically it gets uh, evaporated. Okay. So, no cooling effect is achieved and the body temperature rises stiffly. So, that we do not get the evaporative cooling. So, cooling extra cooling effect we do not get. So, stiffly our body that means, sometime what happened at very high and dry temperature our sweat gland actually fails. So, sweating we stop sweating in that case the heat stroke takes place. So, so, if the body temperature the sweating is actually activated around 30 32 degree Celsius. So, that, but if it is say 45 46 degree Celsius at high temperature sometimes sweat gland may fails. So, we stop sweating. Okay. So, this uh, sweat gland and uh, as uh, uh, then as its sweat gland uh, uh, stops it fails then. So, evaporating uh, evaporating cooling uh, does not take place. Now, coming to the phenomena of acclimatization. So, acclimatization okay, is, uh, it's, uh, is the it is the evaporative cooling where one a person is acclimatized in a particular situation particular environment. What does it mean? It means that the type of at certain te that temperature at that condition the level of sweating what he is generating and level of heat uh, that sweating evaporation is actually balanced. If it is not balanced then the person will feel uncomfortable. 
like the evaporative cooling in a given climatic condition depends on the fact that whether a person gets used to that climate okay, which is known as acclimatization. So, he has to be used to that environment. If a person comes from other place, okay, a cold place to suddenly in the warm place, so he will not be actually he is not used, uh, used to that place. So, at higher temperature of the surrounding environment does not ensure that the sweat will always get evaporated. So, always it, it may not get evaporated. Okay. The sweat may start dripping for a person who is not used to that hot climate. That means, at that temperature he will start releasing more and more sweat. So, that, that uh, the release of heat, release of sweat and evaporation of sweat is not balanced. He is not used to that particular environment. So, the sweat produced and evaporation rate are not balanced. Okay. So, that percent, person is not acclimatized in that particular environment. That means, the body heat transmission through evaporation becomes ineffective. So, it is actually a person who is in uh, say uh, acclimatized in cold zone, he if he suddenly he comes into a, um, some warm and humid place, he will for few days he will start feeling uncomfortable, he will start sweating okay, because the, the sweating production and sweating evaporation is not balanced. So, on the other hand, if the same person get used to that same hot climate, that means body physiology will control the uh, release of the uh, release of sweat, rate of release of sweat, and the person whatever sweat he is releasing, he will start re evaporating that sweat and he will feel cooler. So, this is uh, the phenomena and if during that time the clothing has to take uh, active role in, uh, in uh, making the pers that person comfortable. Okay. So, sweat production and sweat evaporation is not balanced. So, he is uh, for some after some time he will start because he is acclimatized at that condition okay. and uh, now the rate of sweating depends on the number of sweat glands. So, number of sweat glands are actually it is a differ at different part of the body the number of sweat glands are uh, different. Okay. Uh, the rate of sweating depends on the number of participating sweating glands and output of each gland that is this output is important this output depends on the temperature. Okay the evaporative heat loss is more effective if the sweat coming out from the active sweat glands covers uniformly covers actually evenly in our body, but it is not that because our body different parts of the body the concentration of sweat glands are different. Okay. If it is actually uniform then it will be perfect okay. evaporative some in some places we will find that we are sweating too much. So, we are sweating too much that means, at that point the sweating rate is more than the evaporative rate. So, sweating sweat will start dripping, but on other places we do not sweat that much. So, that that is how it is not actually distributed uniform evenly. Okay. So, number of sweat glands per unit area is different at different parts of the body. Very high concentration in the front and back of the trunk here. So, at the trunk and back of hand, forearm, upper arm and forehead. So, in this uh, forehead and there we, we will we see that we start sweating, we sweat because number of sweat glands are very high there. Okay. And the active uh, this uh, so, this uh, number of sweat glands are uh, different at different parts of the body and 
medium concentrations are there in arms, legs and cheeks. There we normally do not uh, get uh, sweat and it is a very low it is a soul and pump. Here we normally sweat do not sweat. Okay. So, depending on this sweat this uh, uh, different uh, uh, concentration we we sweat at different. Okay. So, these are the uh, different uh, concentration of the sweat glands per square centimeter. Okay. These are the different number of sweat glands here if you see upper back of hand it is around say close to 375 per square centimeter. It is the number of sweat glands are very. So, these are the different types of and minimum as at the cheek and temple. Okay. And depending on this uh, type of number of sweat glands we have to design our active clothing. So, active clothing if we know the number of sweat gland at different uh, portion of our body, we should be able to design our active clothing which is actually supposed to absorb the sweats. This sweat absorption, so where the uh, that means at this zone upper back of the trunk. Okay. Here if we design our active sports clothing. So, we know the so for active wear we know that this zone our sweating will be high. So, our type of fabric should be such that it enhance the, the evaporative cooling from that okay. and where it is low we can actually eliminate that we can not we need not take that much uh, uh, precaution. So, so this is uh, at a different zone is uh, we can uh, design our clothing accordingly and uh, this uh, sweat gland is activated at different temperature as we have discussed as the temperature increases from say 10 to say 30 degree Celsius. So, at during this increase the sweating the sensation which physiological sensation which we receive we get uh, it gets uh, enhanced. So, sweating is peak at say 35, 36 degree Celsius and as we as the temperature goes on increasing the sweating rate uh, drops and at very high temperature the sweat glands fail. So, these are the various uh, physiological uh, activities we have uh, neurophysiological activities we have discussed. So, in this segment we have discussed the different types of sensors available in our sensors or receptors available in our skin to sense the different uh, stimuli. The sensors are uh, uh, mechanical sensors and thermal sensors. Mechanical sensors are of different types tactile sensors, the pain sensors, pressure sensors vibration sensor that we have discussed. Also the thermal sensors we have discussed that thermal sensors of basically two types one is a warm sensor and this cold sensor. Warm sensor can be divided into two types it is a normal warm and a warm pain hot pain sensor. Cold sensors are of two types the normal cold and cold pain sensor and knowledge of all these things are required to design our clothing for comfortable uh, human being. So, we can design if we have uh, detailed knowledge of all these uh, sensations or neurophysiological activity we can design our clothing uh, for proper comfort of our human being. Okay. So, we will uh, we'll end this uh, neurophysiological sensor phenomena of clothing comfort here and in next segment we will start with our tactile sensation of clothing, where we will discuss uh, different uh, clothing structure that means fabric structure and how different measurement technique and uh, different handle technique, handle measurement technique this we will discuss. So, thank you.